background was that we uh, had moved to Vero Beach, Florida, 10 years ago um, for some specific reasons. And that kind of ran its course. And we decided we were going to move. And we spent, and that's how I ran across your website. We spent a lot of time analyzing, first of all, identifying the parameters that we wanted to achieve in our new location. And then identifying all these data sources, including your website. I think we probably actually started with your website. Uh, we identified a lot of other data sources and ultimately um, sort of built a spreadsheet and um, arrived in Tallahassee. We we originally thought we were going to go to Winter Park, Florida, which is a, you may know it, it's a uh, really kind of a suburb of Atlanta, but it's a separate city, one city north of Orlando in Orange County. And um, that was close, but ultimately Tallahassee won out. Nice. Interesting. Uh, well, then we can get right into it. It sounds like you're uh, ready to go. <laughs> sure. I, I wasn't really sure whether you wanted to talk about our process or about Vero or about Tallahassee or I've looked at, I think I've watched one or two of these and it seems like you're mostly just getting somebody locally to talk about their town. Yes. And if you want to do that with Tallahassee, we can, we haven't been here very long, but you know, I probably know more about it than the average person just moved here because we're sort of urban planning junkies. So, I mean, we spent so much time doing research and then I've spent a lot of time getting to know the place and been going to some government meetings and things like that. But I'm certainly not an expert in Tallahassee. There'd be people that know a lot more about it than me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no worries about that. Uh, I mean, I think you're definitely more knowledgeable than the average bear. So I think you'll still be a good candidate. <laughs> okay. So that's what you want to talk about is Tallahassee? Yeah, if that's all right with you. Sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, then, talking about Tallahassee, you said that you had a whole spreadsheet worth of data that uh, brought you there. What specifically about Tallahassee convinced you? Yeah, so I could go down the list of parameters, but there there are multiple ones. Do you, you want me to sort of generally talk about the most significant things that brought us to Tallahassee? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we are avid bicycle riders, primarily recreational riders. I rode about 6,000 miles last year. My wife rode about 4,000. We're, we're 62 and retired, so we have time to do what we want to do. And um, so a key factor for us was identifying a place that had good recreational riding opportunities. And that there's a lot of things that go into what constitutes good recreational riding opportunities. Um, and also a place that um, we thought we could ride for transportation, although in reality, because like all Americans, no, I shouldn't say all Americans, like most Americans, we own cars. I'm embarrassed to say we own two cars. And uh, it's very easy to drive, especially in Tallahassee. So, you know, if we have half an excuse, we tend to get in the car rather than a ride, which is unfortunate. I hope that changes over time. But the the recreational riding in Tallahassee uh, for Florida is really good. And by the way, we considered leaving Florida, um, but there weren't a lot of other places that met our parameters. The others were generally in uh, California, and that was just a much more complicated move. And California is an expensive place for retirees. Generally, people don't retire to California unless they really have some reason that they need to. So um, within Florida, there and, and there's kind of two data points that you can start to evaluate bicycling. One is the League of American Bicyclists has a, a, a program that they call Bicycle Friendly America, where they rank cities based on... Uh, bicycle attributes. And the other one that we think was probably more helpful to us is the national organization People for Bikes. And People for Bikes looks at two parameters. They look at um, sort of the network, how good is the infrastructure, and then they look at the bicycle culture. We think that's a good way to look at it. And in general, when you merge those two numbers together in the People for Bikes formula, Tallahassee comes out number two in Florida, 
Number one is Key West. Key West is a very odd place. It was never on our on our radar to move there. Um, it's, you know, it's it's just a completely different animal. It's you know basically an island that's ninety miles offshore, um, down a very thin chain of islands. So um, we like the Keys a lot, but we never really considered that as a as a as a really livable place. It wouldn't have met a lot of our other parameters. So that really left Tallahassee. Another parameter that was very important to us, and this is probably where we started with your website, um, and of course this is very personal and half of your followers will be offended and half will be cheering us on, but uh, we wanted a place uh, that had uh, very progressive local government. Uh, and really what that boils down to, to be blunt, is we wanted a place where the local government was dominated by uh, Democrats. And in, in Florida, it's hard to do that. Um, there really were only about four places. Uh, that's Broward County, which is where Fort Lauderdale is, which was way too congested and would fail miserably on the bike, bike ability test. Um, there is Orange County. And again, that's Orlando. And that's where Winter Park is. And that was sort of our number two choice, was a number one for a while. Um, not nearly as good from a bicycle standpoint, although not bad. And they're doing a lot of things that are really good, but it's just a large congested place. And so the recreational riding in particular, the places where you can ride, very good on culture, decent on transportation, bicycle transportation for such a congested place. But in terms of going out, like this morning, I went out and rode 28 and a half miles. Um, and I do that probably four times a week with a group. And I don't have to go very far to have a really fabulous, comfortable, safe place to ride with people that I like to ride with. And the people existed and the frequency of riding existed in Winter Park, but the roads and the places that they ride, just because they're, it's so much more developed, just weren't nearly as, um, nearly as nice as here. Also, uh, this place, unlike Peninsular Florida, has rolling hills and big trees. And Tallahassee prides itself as a tree town. They're very, very proud of their live oaks. And we love trees. We think they make for a better climate. And a lot of the bicycling here, you're riding in what's called a canopy road. Tallahassee um, makes a big deal out of their canopy roads. And if you were to Google Tallahassee canopy roads, you'll find out all sorts of things about them. But basically it's a road where the trees have, have grown, mostly these live oaks have uh, sort of the can tree canopies grown over these country roads, which when it's you know hot and humid in Florida is really terrific. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't have had that at all in peninsular Florida, Winter Park or, or anywhere else. And so you might say, well, what's the fourth one? The fourth one is Alachua County, which is Gainesville. Gainesville's in Alachua County. And that's where the University of Florida is. And uh, that's sort of close. It's geographically closest to Tallahassee. It's also a very big college town. And now I'm getting to a third one of our parameters. We wanted to be in a college town because it sort of goes with the idea of a progressive place. Um, um, we like many, and I, I'm happy to talk about this more, but we like many of the attributes of a college town. And Tallahassee is a superb college town because there's three big colleges here. Florida State University, which is a major you know, university in the United States and one of the really big and well-respected schools in, uh, in Florida is based here. Uh, FAMU is based here, and that is the number one rated historically black college in the United States. So really a terrific um, addition to, you know, to the area. And then there's a giant community college. Normally, I wouldn't be focusing too much on community colleges. Most every place in Florida, there's a community college. This one, TCC, Tallahassee Community College, is huge. Um, so, it, you know, it functions a little bit like a university because of its size. Um, University of Florida generally considered the best college in Florida. That's in Alachua, Gainesville. Uh, the difference is that in Gainesville, the town is really dominated by the college. Uh, at least that's our impression. And a lot of what I'm giving you is just subjective information. Um, and all things being equal, we really wanted a college town. 
Uh, but we weren't sure we wanted a college town where the university was so dominant. And it's not bad. One of the towns in California that we love, that we looked at is Davis. Clearly, Davis is is uh, dominated by UC Davis, and we still love Davis. But, you know, if we had our choice, a place that had, uh, you know, three significant colleges, but a lot of other things going on as well, that was a plus. And in Tallahassee, in addition to having those three colleges, this is obviously the state capital. So it's the seat of government. And Florida's a big state, you know, 26 million people, fairly small government, and they pride themselves in that. Uh, not so sure that that's something to be all that proud of, but um, they have a pretty small government for 26 million people. And a lot of that government is here. Um, so that brings another uh, perspective as well. So I guess I've hit on three things now, uh, you know, progressive, Democrat dominated local government, progressive population. And that simply means a lot more Democrats than Republicans to us. That's my definition of it. Um, much better bicycling and a college town with very significant colleges, but more than colleges. So those were three big parameters. Um, the weather was also a parameter. And originally we were really leaning towards Winter Park instead of Tallahassee because of the weather. We coming from Vero Beach, Vero Beach is considered the start of the tropics. So it's a very different climate than Tallahassee. And we weren't sure that uh, I, in particular, my wife was always okay with it, that I was going to be happy with a place that has a real winter. Um, she really likes to have seasons. And in Vero Beach, we basically had about uh, eight months of brutal summer and about four months of really terrific winter. Um, the the winter here is not as terrific as Vero Beach. Um, we have a lot of cold days, but certainly compared to much of the United States, uh, it's a pretty nice winter. And I do like the seasons. And as we have transitioned, Vero Beach was important to us at the time because we were really into boating. And um, when we sort of transitioned out of boating, that kind of ran its course, it became less important for it to be as hot. Um, so for bicycling, actually, it's nicer for it to be a little bit cooler and not have quite so many uh, sweaty, humid days. So, um, so far, the climate here is a reasonable compromise. Um, and, you know, in some ways better than, say, some of the places we were looking in California, although certainly the places we were looking in California have terrific weather, slow, Davis, the Bay Area, Palo Alto. But um, we have, it's a lot greener here. We don't have this extended period like they have in most of California, at least Northern California, where things just dry up and get brown for months. So all in all, climate here, is it perfect? No, but okay and uh probably in, in terms of you know our choices in florida it's we may like it better than winter park winter park in the summer uh you know orlando everybody's ever been to disney knows this uh it's the humidity is brutal there and i'm sure it's going to be bad here but it lasts a long time in winter park and it's brutal so those were major parameters mm -hmm. nice. there were others <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing the your big three. Um, now that you're in Tallahassee, or Tallahassee, Tallahassee. Um, now that you're in Tallahassee, there might have been four there if you factor in climate. That's true. Four politics, right. bicycle friendly, climate, uh, college town. You're right. Four. Uh, your big four parameters. Now that you're in, well, Tallahassee, let me. May I add one more before I interrupt you? Yeah. No. Go ahead. Density really matters. Um, in that. That ultimately was probably an important factor in Tallahassee outweighing Winter Park. Um, you can move around here in a car really easily. I mean, there are people here who complain about the traffic, but these are people who have never lived a play, in a place that really has traffic because it's just a very easy place to get around. The, the There's you know enough density that most everything you want is here. There are some things that aren't, for example, 
we're starting to think about a new car and we we'll pro probably wouldn't buy one, but there's no Lexus dealer here. There's no Tesla dealer, although they're getting one. Um, you know, so you don't have really everything you would have in a place like Orange County, but it's enough. And that trade-off, you know, in Orange County, you're going to be spending, depending upon when you go out in Winter Park, you could be spending a lot of time in traffic and you just don't have that here. And that was a big plus. So, um, medium density, you know, we, we the, the city, I think is around 200,000 people. You could confirm this. And I think the County, and this, there's really only one significant size city in the County at Leon County, uh, is I think Leon County is about 300,000. So great, great on the density. Excellent. Sorry um, to interrupt. No worries. Um, what are, now that you're in Tallahassee, what are some of your favorite things uh, and your least favorite things about it? Right. So the, the recreational bicycle riding opportunities have surpassed our expectation. Like, you know, when I was out riding today, I don't have to go very far at all. And unfortunately I'm driving my bike to the ride. I could probably avoid that, but I don't have to drive very far and I'm not driving in traffic. And when I get there, I'm riding on country roads where generally the drivers are respectful. Um, but there aren't that many of them. I mean, I can ride along for five, 10 minutes and not see a car. We try not to go during the morning or afternoon rush. Being retired, we have that flexibility. But um, the bicycling has been great. Been surprised at how much we like the climate. Even today, when I got up to start my ride at nine o'clock, it was 75 degrees cooled off enough last night that the dew point was manageable. And it was really, you know, for a two hour ride starting at nine o'clock in mid-May, it was um, it was quite nice. And I'm sure that it wouldn't be the same story in mid-July or August. But one thing about us that affected our decision is our general rule, no matter where we would be in Florida, would be to get out of Florida for two to three months every summer. And we'll typically go, as we are doing this year, we will go bicycling in Europe. So we're doing a eight week um, bicycle, self-supported bicycle tour of Europe. Uh, and we're leaving a little bit later this year because we had some other things going on, but we will be completely gone for August and September. So we'll miss a lot of the heat. We'll, we'll experience the heat in, in July. And, and it's okay to have some of that really bad heat and humidity for a while. The problem that we had in South Florida and Vero Beach is it just goes on for so long that you just become sick of it. And there's very little variability. It's the same every day and night for months and months and months. What else have we, we've been pleasantly surprised at how easy it is to move around here. I mean, we mostly validated what we thought was happening. Um, been um, just slightly disappointed that we don't quite have the depths of services We're my wife and I are in the process of planning and building a house and you don't have nearly as many options here it's a sort of a traditional southern town in a lot of ways you couldn't tell that you're if you were walking around Tallahassee you couldn't tell that you're not someplace in Georgia it's very similar to Georgia Leon County's northern border is the Georgia line. I rode my bicycle on Saturday from the East Tallahassee over the line into Georgia. It's not very far. And so it's, you know, it's a lot of Southern traditional. We're going to have a hard time. We like um, modern contemporary design and modern contemporary furniture. We're going to have a hard time finding that here. It's going to be a struggle. We will. We may have to get in our car and drive some. Wouldn't have had that problem in uh, the Orlando area. Uh, the other uh, major disappointment of Tallahassee that I think people should know is, and the, the people here know it, they are unhappy about it, nobody seems to be able to fix it, uh, there really is not a vibrant um, full-time downtown. Now, there's a very significant downtown loaded with office buildings and lawyers and lobbyists, but there's just no residential vibe down there. Um, there are some restaurants, but it's generally not a destination like it would be a downtown and a lot of other places. And we love downtowns. Um, you know, we'd like a downtown where you, if you go down there uh, at eight o'clock at night, there's tons of restaurants, tons of people walking around and they're trying, but we just don't have that. It's hard to sort of point to 
a district in downtown that you would say is a really cool downtown like you would say in Davis or Palo Alto or um, um, Northampton, Massachusetts, downtown I particularly like. We just don't have that. So that that's a bit of a downside, not a deal killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Of any other any other major negatives? Uh, well, as we continue to talk, I may think of some, but yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah. Uh, if someone were to come visit you for the day or maybe a couple of days, what are like local things that you would take them that you would say they absolutely have to do? Oh, that's a great question because I've been actually there's so many that I was afraid I wouldn't remember them when the time came and we we did have some friends come visit and I'm sure we'll have more. So I've been making a list and you'll see me. I'm looking down at my notes. Uh, I have been generating a list of the things we don't want to forget when we have visitors. Uh, so I, I was just lamenting the problems with downtown. Let me tell you a really wonderful attribute of downtown is a project they apparently recently completed called Cascade Park, which is an urban downtown park with a big amphitheater in it. It's really spectacular. There was a big uh, music festival in Cascade Park park that my wife and I went to three or four weeks ago called Word of South. Strange name for a music festival. It's actually a music and literary festival. And it was just spectacular at any point in time. And this is a large park. They had five or six different venues with live bands going. So this Cascade Park is really cool. Great for bicycling and walking. That's certainly where I would take someone. I mentioned bicycling, and I mentioned mostly road riding. Tallahassee is a huge off-road mountain bike town, and there are and it's a huge outdoor town. Um, you can tell it's a pretty small town, but it's got an REI. That tells you something. Um, there are all of these greenways. We right now are living very close to something called the Miccosukee Greenway, which is a seven-mile-long linear park, and there are greenway after greenway after greenway, so that's someplace I would take people. Uh, a place that everyone's been telling us about, we haven't been able to get down to it yet, is uh, St. Mark's Lighthouse, which is part of the National Park System. We're looking forward to seeing that. There is a really cool sort of artsy area called Railroad Square. That's a place that I would take people. There is a very well-respected park called Wakula Springs. We haven't done much but just sort of look around there's a boat trip in there and i'm told that when you take that boat trip it, you really feel like you're in old florida in the jungle i would take people there uh, we've heard that there's a place that makes homemade sausage called bradfordville sausage we've ridden by it we haven't tried the sausage we want to go there there's a uh the state gardens are here we haven't seen them either you can see most of these places we haven't had time to get to, but it's called McKay Gardens. Sounds great. We want to go see that. Um, and there's uh, a town just over the line in Thomas, in Georgia called Thomasville that people really rave about as maybe having that vibrant little downtown that we're missing. So we want to get up there sometime. I think that's about 40 miles from 40 minutes from where we live now. And then other than that, there's a lot of opportunities to get out on lakes and rivers, kayaking and canoeing. So that's something that we will do and something that we'll do with guests. So that's my preliminary list so far of the things that I think somebody from out of town would want to go see. Excellent. Uh, that was a really comprehensive list. Thank you for that. Uh, oh, this is, we're coming to the end now of our time. Um, one of yes. our final questions is who would you recommend move to Tallahassee? Like who do you think would really do well there? Yeah, really great question. Well, I think it's a very family-oriented town. You know, there's a lot of problems in Florida right now with the state government and the educational system. If you read the paper, I mean, I consider them a problem. Some people would consider them a plus. But uh, I, I think a lot of the teachers are really struggling with what they, the state government's doing to them. And uh, but But I would say that I think Tallahassee is a very family-oriented place. It's, it strikes me as a great place to, re, to raise a family. Our realtor was a young woman with young children, and I could tell she was just really into this. She'd grown up here, really into this community, and I think uh, it was a uh, just a really nice place for her kids and her family. Uh, so that would be number one. 
I mean, for, we're retirees. If you want a place that has moderate weather and, you know, I didn't really mention cost of living, but Tallahassee is very affordable. Uh, uh, not so for Winter Park. Our house budget in Winter Park was going to be twice what it would be literally in Tallahassee. Um, very affordable place. Uh, we have a 30 year old son. He could move here. He lives in San Francisco now. I don't know how he could possibly ever buy a house in San Francisco. He could come here and buy a house very easily. Um, my, doesn't Tallahassee doesn't have the tech community that San Francisco does, and he's in the tech world, so maybe he wouldn't want to come here. But for the right young person who wants a very affordable place, maybe they haven't even started a family yet, but wants to be able to buy a house, that would be great. But again, if, for retirees, especially if you're um, if, if you're really watching your budget, I think it's a, a great place. So I, I think that would be a good list. Um, families, retirees, uh, and maybe younger people. There's enough going on here, I think, for younger people that um, maybe, you know, maybe the vibe's not for everybody, but I think it would be for a lot of people. But, you know, the college town brings a lot to the table. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Well, that was my final question, aside from, is there anything you want to share with us before we sign off? No, I think in a half an hour, we did a pretty good job of covering Tallahassee from a newcomer's perspective. <laughs> yeah, I like to think so. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and before you sign off, could you do me a favor and just like smile into the camera, like for a picture really quick so I can make the thumbnail? Uh, <laughs> makes my life easy. Thank you. Uh, and then we should be good. If you have nothing else to say, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with me. Uh, it was my pleasure, Alex. Take care. Yeah, Bye -bye. Have a great day.